Good morning. We're out on the River Avon. We're doing a bit of pike fishing. The first proper pike session that I've done this year. I had a very half-hearted attempt last Monday. I was only out for a couple of hours. A few things went wrong with school runs and all sorts of bits and pieces. So by the time I turned up, set up, got the rods out, I had to turn around and go back home. But hey, what the hell. Um, so yeah, I've just got two rods out. Anyone who's watched any of my other videos will probably recognise the swim. It's my favourite tree swim on the Kenshin stretch. And yeah, I've got one uh, mackerel tail on a ledger out towards the tree. And the second rod's got a sprat, but I'm kind of casting and let it drift down in the current. I'm not really sure how active the fish are going to be. I don't know whether they're going to want to chase something down or there'll be our interest in a static bait. So I bought a load of sprats and I bought a load of uh, lures and some mackerel. And I figured I'd chop and change in each swim between each method. The usual kind of 20 minutes, half an hour in each um, spot. And give it a go, see what happens. Uh, a friend of mine was out yesterday and he had a couple of jacks out from along this stretch. Very, very different conditions though. Yesterday it was incredibly sunny, and really warm actually for the time of year. Today we've had some rain, it's kind of overcast, but there is some blue coming out in the sky behind me. Um, there's no wind, it's very still, there's virtually no current. So, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. It's the first session, so it's you know, a bit of a tester. Yeah, fingers crossed, we'll put a pike on the back. Well, conditions have completely changed now. It's gone from being muggy and rainy and kind of looking quite pikey actually, to blue skies, fast moving clouds and winds got up and it's, uh, yeah, it's warm in the sun, but jeez, it's cold in the shade. So anyway, I've had a change of swims. I've come, oh, blimey, 100 paces up the bank and I'm in a swim where I actually got a fish from uh, late last year. So I'm gonna give this a go. Um, yeah, I think 20 minutes here, I'm not, I spent far too long in the other swim. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes. Um, same tactics as before, but the mackerel tail out in the little cove just around to my right and the sprat is drifting through the current. I'm getting a tap on the sprat. I'm going to go and pay attention to that, I think. Yeah, that's fish on. Massive snaggy bush down the side here. Just put me straight in it. It actually came out, but it went slack. It's only a tiny jack. But that was on the drifting sprats. Right, let's get another rig out there. Oh, how annoying. <laughs> so, after losing that one, at the net, I think I've just had his little brother. <laughs> there you go, lose one, get one. Only a little baby jack, but I'm pretty happy not to have blanked my first session out. Happy days. Right, let's get him back. I've just lost another one on the strike on the sprats drifting around in the swim. I knew I was gonna regret only bringing 10. But let's give it another go. So oh, my Sprat rig is a little size 8 treble. And a nice big, I think that's like a size 2 or something. And I'm just hooking them through the head. Like that. And then I'm putting the other one down on the flank. Like that. I've got a little uh, AA shot there. I'm just casting it out and letting it drift down the swim. So let's do that now. See if we get another knock. 
but that's three knocks I've had so far in this one swim on this method. It's probably a bit too far around. There's not much current today, so it's sinking very slowly and just drifting very slowly. So, that's better. So I'm letting that drift down. There's about enough weight on that rig to let it sink and just drift in the current. So, after that initial burst of activity, it's tailed off now. I've stuck in here because I did get another hit on the sprat rod. And, very, and yeah, I struck but came off. And bearing in mind that's the only signs of activity I've had is on the sprat rods. You might be able to see it out there. I've changed the right hand rod over to a float and I've only done one cast but I'm letting it drift through the swim. And I'm going to keep changing the depth and see if that makes a difference. It's interesting when I release that fish down in the edge here just how clear the water is. Um, yeah, I thought it was going to be pretty cloudy today, but no, it's completely clear. So yeah, I'm going to cast that float rod, I reckon probably kind of five, ten times, something like that. And I'm just going to let it keep drifting through the centre section. See what happens. Oh, I think I'm getting a twitch on the other rod, so I'm going to concentrate on that now. So, another new swim. Again, it's only 50 or so paces down the bank. But yeah, that other swim had completely dried up. So yeah, I'm going to give it 20 minutes here. I'm going to stick with the same tactics. I'm going to drift those sprats through. And we'll see if we can get another pickup. Well, I've been in this swim a good 15, if not 20 minutes. I've not had a knock, a tap, and nothing. No signs of action. So I think I'm going to up sticks. I'm going to head back past the tree swim. There's two swims I want to investigate down there. And uh, yeah, we'll give it a go. I got really excited because of those uh, the sprat rod do what I did in my last swim. I thought, that's it, it's going to kick off. Um, but it's been very, very slow. So yeah, let's reel in, hoof down, see if we can pull out anything down there. So another new swim. Never actually had a fish out of here, but I've always thought it looks really pikey. It's kind of snaggy tree and all the rest of it here. And it's just on this curve of the river. So, both rods out. Again, drifting sprats, although probably the right hand rod is pretty much static. And I'm letting the left hand rod do what it wants. That's just drifting through that corner. So, 10 minutes here, and then probably onto the last swim of the day, I reckon. I've had success in this swim before when the flow's been this slow, so I thought, what the hell, it's closest to the car. And uh, yeah, it's only really fishable when it's like this. So I've put a dead bait in this little hole here, where I've had several fish from in the past. And the other rod, I've still got on the sprat, and I'm drifting it through this channel here. I've tried along this far reed margin down here, but it's so full of snags and dying off reeds and stuff. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna need another month until that's really died back, I reckon. So yeah, I think that's gonna be it for today. So I might as well sign off. Hope you enjoyed that, it's only a short video. It's good to get one fish on camera. And uh, yeah, it was really good to kind of get a couple of hits on the sprats. We'll put that method to its test. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Like the video if you did, subscribe if you haven't. and. Uh, Hopefully, next week, we'll be back on the bank doing some more pike angling. Cheers. <laughs> well, I'm using the GoPro for this. I've got no idea whether I've got it set up right or not. So here goes. But yeah, just on the outro blog, I was just setting the GoPro up to do a bit of a time lapse. And... Jack. <laughs> Happy days. <laughs>
this one actually put on a real good scrap. I thought it was much bigger. But yeah, all good practice. It's really lightly hooked in the scissors. So no deep hooking or anything, which I'm really happy about. Yeah. Another five. Happy days. Let's get back. Never know. There might be time for one more. I should probably explain the yellow gloves before I sign up as well bashed up my thumb and it's hurting like hell and I don't want to get it infected so I thought sod it let's wear the marigolds the other thing is it starts your hands absolutely reeking a pike